Thank you for the invitation and having me here to uh, present in this forum. So as uh, Ju was saying, my uh, title of the talk is Temporary Mechanical Circuit Support. So we'll talk about the, uh, about the overview of the available temporary mechanical circuit support uh, devices, um, hemodynamic uh, effect of mechanical circuit support devices. So uh, the purpose of using the circuit support is to augmenting the blood flow or increasing the cardiac output, and also decompressing the left and or right ventricles to reduce the workload. So I'm sorry, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the fre oh, pressure yeah. volume loops here. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this is the, uh, the pressure volume loop. The, the work that uh, is done by every single cardiac cycle is equal to the area under the pressure volume loop. This is the pressure, this is the volume. Here's the, where the mitral valve opens, the left ventricle gets filled by the blood. Mitral valve closes, isovolumic contraction time. Aortic valve opens, the blood gets ejected, and then aortic valve closes. Then the difference between the, difference between the two uh, area between the contraction is the stroke volume. So the purpose of using the mechanical circuit support is to decrease the area under the curve so the blood does less work and more work done by mechanical circuit support. However, the, the myocardial oxygen consumption not only depends on the uh, stroke work or the area under the curve, it also depends on the position of this loop too. As the ventricle gets more filled, more volume, the loop can move to the right, or more pressure can move up. Therefore, the potential energy behind it goes up, and the my myocardial con oxygen consumption increases as well. So it's important as we decompressing the left ventricles and moving the loop toward the left, the myocardial oxygen consumption decreases, then therefore less work done by the heart. What happened in the cardiogenic shock, the contractility decreases, this loop moves all the way to the right, therefore the decreasing the stroke volume, however, the myocardial cons uh, oxygen consumption increases significantly. So we'll talk a little bit about more about available devices that we have. The first device that it's a uh, intraortic balloon pump. It's a device that's been around for a long time. It's placed uh, in the uh, descending aorta. It uh, inflates at the onset of diastole. Therefore, it increases the uh, coronary perfusion. It deflates at the end of the diastole decreases the afterload, decreases the work, a cardiac work, it gives you subcardiac output and also decreases the myocardial oxygen consumption. Indication that we use uh, intraortic balloon pump are mostly in a cardiogenic shock and unstable acute myocardial infarction for high-risk PCIs, refractory heart failure, refractory VT or VF, the refractory angina, and also for a bridge to transplant. The contraindication, the absolute contraindication if there's a known severe pathology of aorta or severe or significant aortic regurgitation. We have to be careful, a relative contraindication of people with a severe peripheral vascular disease, triple A's, or mild aortic regurgitation. So again, a little bit of the volume, pressure volume loop here. So this is uh, kind of comparing uh, using the balloon pump versus the not using the balloon pump. And the gray area is the what, when we use the balloon pump. This is, as we see, it moves the uh, loop a little bit to the left and increasing your stroke volume as uh, demonstrated as the SV2 uh, over there. So it can give you some cardiac output up to 0.5 liter per minute. It uh, decreases the afterload slightly and it increases the mean arterial pressure to some extent. It gives you the increasing the stroke volume. Cardiac flow, therefore cardiac power increases. It decreases left ventricular uh, and diastolic pressure, therefore the wedge pressure. Does not have that much effect of the preload of the ventricle. It's an effective pump for increasing the, cardiac, uh, the coronary perfusion. It decreases myocardial oxygen consumption and therefore it increases the peripheral uh, tissue perfusion. So it's an effective pump to increase the coronary perfusion and also to give you to some extent some cardiac output and cardiac flow and increasing the peripheral tissue perfusion, which is the the main purpose of using this, these pumps. 
The second uh, family of pumps I will talk about is impeller. You have uh, multiple different type of impellers. Impeller 2.5 CP51LD is being used for the left side of support and RP for the, for the uh, right side of the support. So indication, it has been approved for high-risk PCI up to six hours. In the cardiogenic shock, up to four days for impellers 2.5 and CP, and up to 14 days for uh, impeller 5.0 and uh, LD. The contraindication, if there's a LV thrombus, if there's a mechanical aortic valve, severe aortic regurgitation, a moderate to severe aortic insufficiency, severe peripheral vascular disease, significant right side failure, and the presence of AST or VSD. The axis can be different. We can put this impeller on a different axis. The most common axis use a femoral uh, insertion, which mostly we use impeller 2.5 and CP. And, but we also can put in an axillary and mostly use an impeller 5.0. And it's, this is important for mostly for the people that we know they're gonna be on it for a, a longer period of the time, especially people who are waiting for a heart transplant, for example, uh, that, that increasing their mobility of the patient so they cannot stay in the bed for, for a long period of the time. And LD is a surgically placed into the ascending aorta. This is how we uh, see uh, on, the, on the echo. This is the uh, impeller, which is crosses the aortic valve. The inlet is, uh, sits in the left ventricle. The outlet is in the uh, ascending aorta. And uh, this is how the monitor that we usually see in the CCU. The impeller CP and 2.5, the placement signal is up there that looks like an aortic um, a waveform. Um, and the, so the five was a little bit different because it shows the, actually the difference between the left ventricle and ascending aorta and has a negative deflection. But it's important to pay attention to this uh, the power, uh, 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 the, the power placement uh, or signal here. There should be some pulsatility. That means the, uh, the impeller is crossing the aortic valve and is not on just one side of the heart, either in the left ventricle or in the ascending aorta. So what, what does impeller uh, do for us? As you see, the, it moves the pr uh, pressure volume loop all the way to the left, therefore decreasing the work by your heart significantly. So it can give you from 1.5 uh, to 5 a liter per minute, depend on type of the impeller and also the speed that you use. Doesn't have, does not have that much effect on afterload, but increase the mean arterial pressure significantly, decreasing the, uh, left, uh, increasing the left ventricular, um, uh, the, the cardiac flow and cardiac power, decreases the left ventricular end diastolic pressure, therefore the wedge pressure, decreasing the left ventricular uh, preload. It increases the cardiac perf uh, coronary perfusion to some extent, significantly decreases myocardial oxygen uh, consumption. Therefore, it's a very effective pump to offload the left ventricle and let the heart um, uh, relax and recover while give you, uh, increasing the perfusion uh, to peripheral um, uh, organs. The RP impeller is used for the, uh, the right side support. Uh, it's placed from the uh, femoral vein. The inlet sits in the right atrium, the outlet in the pulmonary artery, and takes the blood from the right atrium and puts it in the pulmonary artery, therefore supports the, uh, the right ventricle. The indication, it's uh, approved up to 14 days in the uh, people, the patients with the body surface area more than 1.5 meters square. It's used for the uh, acute right side failure, um, like patient after LVAD, uh, myocardial inf uh, infarction inf involving the right ventricle, uh, heart transplant, or open heart surgery. The contraindication, if there's a, a pulmonary artery wall disorder that uh, anatomically is impossible to place the impella, uh, the impella RP, and also the, if there's a significant uh, tricuspid or pulmonary um, abnormality that you cannot place the RP impella and also if there's a mural thrombus in the RA or uh, vena cava. The impeller also can be used as a biventricular system, RP impeller for RV support, and one of those impellers that we talked about for the LV support as well. The next pump that we talk, we'll talk about is a tandem heart. This, this is the percutaneous extracorporeal platform that, uh, uh, that uh, would be mostly used in the acute heart failure, in the complex PCI, and the right heart uh, support. It's placed, it has a little bit needs, a little more uh, skill, technically uh, skill to placement because it's a transeptal. That means we place the pump uh, through the, the, the cannula goes to the right femoral vein, through, going to the right atrium, uh, and then we, ha we have to cross it uh, transeptally to sit in the left 
um, atrium. Therefore, it takes the oxygenated blood from the left atrium, goes to the pump, and places it in the uh, left femoral artery. What it does with the uh, pressure volume loops here, as you see, at, as we increasing the, uh, the speed of the, the pump, it moves the um, pressure volume to the left and decompresses the heart. So therefore, can give you cardiac flow up to five liter. It, it, this pump can increase the afterload because you are putting the uh, blood into the, perifer uh, the peripheral, so it can increase your afterload to some extent. It increases the mean arterial pressure, decreases the left ventricular end diastolic pressure, th therefore the wedge, it decreases the left ventricular preload, decreases the myocardial oxygen consumption to some extent, um, because we talked about that increasing the afterload just slightly, and also decompresses the heart. So the effects still decrease the myocardial oxygen um, consumption, but it, it increasing the peripheral tissue perfusion. So it's a very effective pump to offload the left ventricle and give you the cardiac output and support the, the perfusion while let the left ventricle rest. Uh, the uh, protect door is, uses the same type of pump uh, but it's a, it's a bicaval dual lumen cannula, which is uh, placed in the right, um, jugular, in, uh, right internal jugular. This is mostly for the right ventricular support. The, it has uh, two lumens, uh, two, the inlet and outlets are in the same cannula. The inlet sits in the right atrium, the outlet sits in pulmonary artery, takes the blood from the right atrium, puts it in pulmonary artery, therefore support, support, support the right ventricle. It can also attach the oxygenator and can act as a uh, venovenous ECMO. The other pump that's uh, used mostly surgically is a uh, central MAC system. It has three components, the pump where the blood comes in and out, the motor that uh, makes the, the pump spin, and the, the console. The advantage of this pump is mag completely magnetically levitated uh, pump. Therefore, it does not have, uh, it has not any, con is a contact free, uh, contact free chamber, does not have any seals and no bearing. That's important because it decreases the sheer stress on the blood, therefore less hemolysis, less thrombosis, and also longer lasting pump. It has uh, uh, approved to use up to 30 days after the uh, cardiotomy patient that failed to come off the pump. It can be used up to 30 days for acute right side failure and up to six hours for extracorporeal circuitry support. It can be used for the left side support from, uh, from the left atrium to the ascending aorta. It can be used at the right support from the right atrium to pulmonary artery, or can be used for the biventricular support uh, to support uh, the right and left ventricle. The effect, uh, hemodynamic effect is a very similar to tandem heart. There's one uh, major effect is the, uh, the afterload. So this is surgically placed, does not increase the afterload significantly. Therefore, uh, it helps with the uh, de increasing, decreasing the myocardial oxygen consumption more effectively than tandem heart. Otherwise, it is a very effective pump to give you the flow, offload the left ventricle, and also decrease the myocardial oxygen consumption significantly. The last pump that we talk about is a, a ECMO. It can be used in two uh, uh, major f uh, f ways, from the veno-arterial ECMO or veno-venous uh, ECMO. Veno-arterial ECMO is take the blood from the venous system, goes to the pump and oxygenator, and puts it in the arterial system, and it's uh, used for uh, more cardiogenic shock patients. And the veno-venous ECMO it takes the blood from the, the venous system and returns to the right side and is usually mostly used for the uh, respiratory failure. So we talked about v, v ECMO in the respiratory failure, VA ECMO in the more in the heart failure and cardiogenic shock patients. Contraindication, if there's a, something severe, uh, irreversible cause, like a, a neurological defect, terminal uh, malignancy, cirrhosis, is not recommended to use this pump. And uh, we have to kind of know if there's somebody has a cardiogenic shock, we don't use just a VV ECMO. If somebody has aortic dissection or severe aortic regurgitation, we have to, we don't use the uh, VA ECMO in these patients. The effect of hemodynamics here, when you turn on the uh, ECMO, as this, uh, the uh, pressure volume loops moves more to the, uh, to the right. It's a very effective pump to uh, give you uh, full support. It basically takes off the uh, the, the heart and lung and give you the flow and the oxygenation.
However, it can increase the after, after load, since it returns the blood mostly, in, especially in the periphery, placed ECMO to the peripheral. Therefore, most of the time that we put the ECMO, we should think about it, what's happening with the left ventricle. If the left ventricle is struggling, that means the wedge is high and we're not offloading the left ventricle by looking at the Swan-Gans catheter and also as echo, we use some type of other devices to offload the left ventricle, meaning the impella, intraortic balloon pump, or surgically placed uh, left ventricle uh, vent to offload the left ventricle. And this is the kind of newer device that we, it's in a trial, and we have an open trial now that we uh, uh, um, recruiting the patient to. This is the, basically is a balloon pump, it's a new, uh, new pulse. It's a balloon pump, but it's placed all internally, and patient actually can go home on this pump. These are a patient that they, they don't need to stay in a hospital, and they're doing good on the uh, intraortic balloon pump, but they're waiting for a transplant, or even as a, a temporary for recovery. It's a good pump that, uh, that we can think about, and newly is a trial right now. So take home points, there are multiple temporary mechanical circuitry support devices available to support their patients with cardiogenic shock. Each device has a unique profile. It's essential to understand the hemodynamics, indication and the contraindication of each device. And device choice depends on patient's need. That means if they need uh, right ventricular support, uh, support, left ventricular support, or both ventricular support, and also the oxygenation that the patient would need. Um, thank you. Sorry.